Spark encapsulates our passion for exploring the vast unknown of unvoiced thoughts and ideas. Good morning. Uh, my name is DJ Javier, and I'm a graphic designer uh, and a fine artist currently located here in Santa Barbara, California. Look at this handsome guy. Uh, and so I've been doing this whole creative thing, art and design, for about 10-ish years or so, and have been able to work with a lot of different clients uh, from sports, entertainment, uh, surfing, streetwear, um, footwear, restaurant, hospitality, uh, all different people in all different industries. Uh, and here are some quick snapshots of the type of work that I've been able to do. Uh, this was for the LA Rams and their LA Bold Fan Day, so I designed the merchandise, the 80,000 flags that we gave away to the fans, and then all the stadium graphics for that game day. Uh, done large-scale large scale mural work for the Rams as well to celebrate uh, AAPI month last year. Done my own footwear collection with Vans to honor my Filipino heritage. Uh, my own signature Spider-Man sock with Marvel and Stance. Done some work for Shake Shack, draw hamburgers really big. Um, <laughs> done work with the Los Angeles Lakers and Mitchell and Ness. Um, done work with LAFC for their Filipino Heritage Night. Uh, more mural work for brands like Tom's at their headquarters. And then even recently got to design my own jewelry collection uh, with this brand called Sky Dog from Laguna Beach. And so I'm sure you're all wondering, okay, how did this guy with tattoos end up here on the stage right now? Um, so the first point was I sucked at school. And so, yes, uh, I went to Dos Pueblos High School, and so this is my actual high school transcript. And so, by the time I graduated high school, uh, I had a 2.25 GPA, which, okay, that's not that bad. Okay, thank you very much. Um, but it's definitely not good. Like, my mom did not put this on the fridge. Um, and so, I ranked 498 out of a class of 567, so that put me at the bottom 12% of my graduating class. And so, Growing up for me, I just kind of figured out, like, you know, if I'm not good at school in the traditional sense, then I'm probably not good at anything. Like, I saw my identity in this piece of paper and the letters on it, and, you know, don't get me wrong, education is extremely important for all the students in here. Like, don't take it lightly, because there's a lot of people around the world who don't have um, opportunity like that. And so, hold on, going back, technical difficulties. Um, what I want to let you guys know is that, um, you know, don't let these letters dictate your potential in your future. Um, it wasn't until after college, or after high school, where I graduated, uh, actually, with um, my 2.25, and I went to San Barbara City College. I took uh, 18 units every semester. I really started to get more focused, and uh, I was working full-time. I was teaching myself graphic design, and then from there, I transferred to Azusa Pacific University, uh, where I got my bachelor's degree in graphic design. And while I was at APU, I kind of told myself, like, you know, why wait to start my career? Why not just do it now? And so while I was at APU, um, I created a, a long spreadsheet of all the people I ever wanted to work for. And then from that, I went on LinkedIn, and I was like, OK, who works at whatever company that I'm trying to get in touch with? And then from there, I figured, OK, if my email in college was dhavier12 at apu.edu, like I'm sure all the students in here have their own email, then this guy at Adidas, his email is probably first name, last name at adidas.com first name, dot last name at adidas.com, some combination of that. And so what, what I had then done is take, I took those emails, I put them in a spreadsheet, and then I just made an email template, I made an online portfolio, and I just blanketed the internet. I just covered the internet, and it worked. I actually started to get responses of people being like, oh, okay, like, let's actually do some work. And that example of Adidas, I ended up doing like, a ton of projects with Adidas as well. Um, and so from there, I went, you know, I was head first. I went all into uh, you know, my career and I didn't look back. And you know, for the first time in my life, I put real energy and time and effort into something. And uh, you know, zooming ahead to where I am now, uh, it's almost like my career thus far has been like I'm building a big fire. And every opportunity I've had, every project, every mural, whatever it is, is like I'm throwing a big log into this big fire. And you know, in a way, like it wasn't always like that. You know, like if I you know go back to where I was at the very beginning, there was no fire. It was just me with like a piece of flint and a piece of steel, and I was trying to make a spark. And you know, for those who have never built a fire before with like flint and steel, in its simplest terms, you know, you're concentrating a lot of energy into a very small space, creating heat. And with that, and with all that energy, steel ignites. And so, you know, it's flint, steel, and you're striking, and the little shavings of the steel turn to spark, which then, you know, from there, 
you hit your tinder, then the kindling, and then you, know, you throw more wood on, and then you got your fire. And you, know, you might not get it the first time. It might take continuous effort, but in order to build your fire, you must keep striking the flint. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep striking, striking, striking until you get spark, until you get fire. And in that same breath, to ignite change, you gotta keep striking. So whether that's change in your circumstance, whether it's change in your career, you know, whatever it is, whatever situation you may be in, in order to get anywhere, you gotta put that small focus energy into what you're doing. Um, you know, behind all the opportunities that I've had working with different brands and partners um, and doing stuff that I never thought I would, there's a mountain of failed attempts. There's so many unanswered emails. There's so many people just like writing me off. Um, you know, lots of moments where I'm like, this is not really gonna work out. I shouldn't be doing this. Um, lots of moments feeling like an imposter. Um, lots of moments feeling self-doubt of like, I'm not good enough to be in this room in these spaces with these people. Um, and so, you know, for me, what, what helps me cut through all of that mess and all that noise is, is this idea of persistence and that persistence is power. And, you know, change requires effort. So whether you want to get up in the morning at like, you know, 6.30 or whatever and get ready for school, it's going to require a little bit of effort. If you're a student and you want to make your, your, your D to a C to a B to an A, it's going to require effort. If you, know, you have big career goals or some passions that you want to pursue, it's going to require some sort of effort. It's going to require you getting out of your comfort zone. And it's going to require you going beyond your boundaries and pushing yourself. Um, it's going to require you being consistently consistent and showing up for whatever, for whatever that is every single day. For me, in my creative career, there's some days where you know, I'm, gonna, I'm working on a mural, some days where I'm behind the computer working on some design work or creative direction, or working on a painting or a collaboration or, or whatever it is, but it's the idea of constantly showing up, whether big or small. Sometimes it's those big things, and sometimes it's just me doodling on a post-it note or looking at funny pictures on the internet for like four hours. Um, and then lastly, I've told a lot of people this, and maybe this is like totally a hot take and controversial, but I think talent is boring. And what I mean by that is, at the end of the day, talent just gives you a leg up for a little bit. But I, what I think is more impressive than that is someone who's willing to show up day after day after day to make themselves better than they were the day before, to make their work better than it was the, the, the day before. And so, you know, for me, I wouldn't call myself naturally talented. Like, if I were to go back and look at my work, I'd be like, this is kind of bad. You shouldn't do this for a living. Um, but for me, I was just determined. I wanted it so badly. I knew that, okay, there's a little bit of path here, and I'm just going to make it work, and I'm going to go all in. And so there's two things I told myself early on in my career. Uh, point A, I will never wear a suit to work. Uh, no offense to anyone here who wears <clears throat> blazers, tucked in shirts, ties, shops at Banana Republic, J. Crew, Cole Hahn, some of you in the crowd, uh, no offense. But for me, the bigger point behind this was I'm never going to change to fit into a certain mold. I'm never going to let anyone dictate who I am and my vision and my style. For all of you here, you have a unique perspective and you have a, and you have a unique story. And so my charge to you guys is don't shift from that. Be who you are and walk confidently in it. And secondly, I told myself there is no plan B. And so picture yourself on a tight rope and there's a safety net. And so, you know, you might be a little bit anxious, like walking across the, you know, tight rope from point A to point B. But um, you're probably going to be a little bit more comfortable knowing, okay, if I fall right now, there's a safety net. Like, so I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. It, it'll, it'll be okay. Uh, picture that same scenario, though, with no safety net. You're probably going to walk with a lot more focus, d uh, determination, um, and you're not really going to mess around. You're going to think about every decision you make. And so for me, I told myself early on, there is no plan B. This is it and I'm gonna make it work. Um, and so every decision I make and every opportunity I do, when things aren't really lining up, I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna go sell insurance at State Farm. I mean, look at me right now, you know? Um, but there is no plan B, and I kind of use that as like my driving force and fire behind my work. And for me, someone who really embodies this idea of there is no plan B uh, is my father, uh, Liberato Javier. And so my father came here in the early 1980s um, with my uh, mother and older siblings for a better life uh, from the Philippines. And so when he came to the United States, he knew nobody. He had no family out here besides someone who kind of sponsored him to come to the United States. And so his goal was, you know, I'm going to come to the U.S. And I'm going to build a better family or build a better opportunity for my family. Um, and recently someone had asked my father, you know, Liberato, when you came to the U.S., 
was there ever an option to go back home? If the money dried up, if the opportunity wasn't there, if uh, you know, the, the, the work and everything that you thought was gonna line up, if it wasn't there, would you have ever just gone back home? Because you knew everyone, ho you knew everyone back there, you had you know, work and everything, and you know, the, the, the comforts of being in your own home country. And in confidence, he told this person, there was never an option to go back home. I had no choice but to make it work. I had no choice but to make it work. And so he was in a new country. He was far from home with a family to feed and no backup plan. Yet he kept striking. And so for my father and I, we have completely different uh, career paths, um, but we both share the same sentiment that we're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep striking. In the face of adversity or circumstance or when things aren't really shaking out how we thought it would, there's no plan B. There is no return ticket to the Philippines. And so, you know, whatever it is, when there is no way, you make a way. So for me and my own career, um, you know, things never really landed in my lap. There was a lot of uphill and there was a lot of moments where I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I shouldn't be doing this. Um, but when there is no way, you make a way. When the door of opportunity is shut, you just kick it down and you just walk right through. When there isn't a seat for you at the table, okay, just make a chair and pull right up, you know? And so when there is no way, you make a way. You keep striking. It's that continuous effort, kind of like what I was talking about with the flint and the steel, you just keep going. You take that energy and that focus and you just keep going for it. Because one day you're gonna get your spark and then one day you're gonna get your flame and the next day you're gonna get your fire. Thank you. <laughs>